Hopefully my connection's nice and strong. How's everybody doing? Friday, we made it! Yay! Let's see here. Go here. As you can see, I am in my trailer in Idaho. We made it. There is still snow on the ground from that big dump of snow that we got um, when we were here last. It's it was that was a significant snowfall. Okay, I Facebook seems to be not moving here. Why is this not moving? Let's see. I'll try this. All right. Ah, oh, there I am. Go in. Come on. Okay. Okay. Hi, Beth. <laughs> I'm on. Yay. All right. Let's see here. Um, yeah, that looks okay. And I can see YouTube, so go ahead and say hi. All right, girls. Relax. I am relaxing. I have no choice here. Hi, Bernadette. I hope Ontario is good today. Linda from Texas. Hi. All right, Kathy. Kathy Lynn Timsager. Hello from East Texas. And Debbie's on from Kentucky. And Ray is on the computer. She's not with me on this trip. So, hey, sweet pea. Hi, Cindy and Jen. How you guys doing? If you are watching over on YouTube, say hi. I see that there's some viewers on there. Nancy, hello. Hello, Susan Woods Long. Thanks for joining us. And Mel, hi Mel, I left you a message today. I'll talk to you over the weekend. And Lisa, hi. Michelle is on from Oklahoma. So let me tell everybody how this kind of goes. Uh, this is my least uh, content rich show of the week. Literally, I will answer questions about the featherweight if one comes up, but really my preference is to just sit here and sew on my little Tula Pink quilt and sip wine and talk with you guys. So I hope you guys will grab a beverage of your choice, a sewing machine and a quilting project, and let's just spend some time together. I started this show um, during the hard shutdown in quarantine in the Pacific Northwest. I was feeling kind of siloed and lonely and I thought, I'm gonna find my tribe. I have to be with my quilting people. And so I started this show and I have found so many good friends that we probably would have never naturally found ourselves in the same room. So not everything about COVID is bad. Hi, Pam Green and Carla. Thanks for jumping over from Instagram. I'm Kathy Klein from Illinois and Linda from Tennessee. It is sunny and cool here too, Bernadette. Um, it is... Oh, what's the temperature outside? It's 48. It feels like spring. The sun is out. The sun, the snow is still melting, but overall it feels good. And Jen Jen's on and Odie's here. <laughs> Odie says, I just checked out the shop on, uh, on uh, IG. Going to have to go shopping. I would be totally fine with you going shopping. <laughs> uh, so tonight, progress continues on my... Um, my little tulip pink quilts. So this is actually the last colored block I have to do. And then basically I just have big pieces to put together. So I am pretty darn excited. We are round and home plate. Um, I have done some shopping, you know, cause I have to make my donations at all of the local quilt shops. Uh Oh, Joan Holland says that there is thunder and lightning and hail in SoCal. That's not good. And Lisa Meadows says, and in the Valley of Phoenix, that there's rain on and off today. What? Odie's in Oregon. She said 60 in sunshine. Hi, Peggy from Louisiana. And 70s in Georgia. Nice. Spring has also hit there, it sounds like. Hi, Jeannie G from Apache Junction. I'm going to be there in just a few weeks. Oh, uh, Odie says all the, oh yes, look at these little guys. These aren't on my shop yet, but look, they're little antique sewing machines dangling. I like dangly earrings, so I made these for me. If you want a pair, I'll make some for you. <laughs> I have more. <laughs> but look what I bought. So look, I saw this at a quilt shop. It's called Stitch Happens. 
it's just a little like medium sized wall hanging. Isn't it cute? So I'm going to be putting this together. Oh, there's some horses coming up the driveway. That's fun. Um, oh, hi, Kathleen and Therese. Hello. Happy Friday. Franny. Hello. <laughs> Y'all, I met Franny's baby sister the other day uh, when we were coming up here to our other place. Um, Fran has several sisters, but two of which so. And so her younger sister, uh, Kathy, that lives in Colville, Washington, purchased a featherweight for me and I delivered it on my way through. And so I got to meet her sister and then her other sister, Mary, Mary, hi, if you're watching, has a machine that's on its way to Mississippi, out Abilene, Mississippi, I believe, uh, also from the orphanage. And so uh, I have outfitted all of Fran Baldwin's sisters. <laughs> Oh, sure. Sherry, she says she's waiting for three feet of snow in Wyoming. Good Lord. Oh, hi, Sunny. Um, the sewing machine pattern. Let's see if it's... Where did it go? Oh, I put it in here. Okay, let's see. It doesn't look too difficult. It's a scrap-friendly quilt, 37 by 40. Simple, fun to piece. It says it's simple and fun to piece. Very cute. So I would say beginner, uh, Sunny. And it's made by, seriously, I think it needs stitches, which is a Kelly with an I, K-E-L-L-I, Fannin, F-A-N-N-I-N, -N -N quilt design. Here, I'll put it in the text. Snowing in part of Las Vegas, Karen. What? That's crazy. Let's see. It is called Stitch Happens. I need my girl tonight, clearly. I'm... Um, not doing good at these putting the links in she isn't the oh mary is the baby oh <laughs> hi denise all right so i would say it's a beginner pattern and then look what else i got so you guys know i'm a fan of those elizabeth hartman patterns i have done like two sasquatch quilt quilts called legendary and I've done the unicorn pillow and now look what I'm gonna do the penguin party come on you guys come on that's so cute it's for my husband he apparently he is a forsaken child and I have not made him very many quilts and so he always goes on and on about his sasquatch quilt and so I'm gonna make him a penguin quilt for the trailer <laughs> Franny, stop saying Ray needs a raise. She's fine. Girl is fine. No problem, Cindy. Oh, you have that pattern, pattern, Mom? Oh, thanks, Lisa. Will you be Ray for me tonight? <laughs> you guys will take care of me. Oh my goodness, Debbie said, um, Debbie Sinclair said that she heard Colorado might get 38 to 40 inches of snow this weekend. No, thank you. No, thank you. Aren't they cute, Fran? I know that you guys, the fabric in here is just luscious too. It's like just that buttery flannel. I love that. So being that, oh, Kathy, hi, Kathy, I'm on the trailer. I'm in Idaho. North Idaho, Sandpoint, actually. Oh, yes, the sewing machine, Mom. Have you made it or you just have the pattern? I just picked it up because I thought it was adorable. I have another one of those patterns that are the um, fusible web, like fusible applique ones with all like the low volume fabrics behind it. I don't remember what the name of that one is, but um, I should probably actually sew here. I have large Marge with me. My 301 workhorse. Uh, Bernadette says, did you see the video from the Antarctic where the penguins jumped into the tourist boat? Well, no, I did not see that while trying to get away from a killer whale. Eek. That's scary. Oh, you need a tour of my trailer? It's a mess, girl. You basically can see everything from right here. See, I'll just give you the pan. I have the husband right here, so he's like, no, thank you. All right, so I'll give you the pan. So we've, look at my kitchen is a mess. So we have kitchen, mess, mess. Look at my new refrigerator, you guys. Yay. 
We finally have refrigeration back and that's the master. Oh, oh, let's go this way. That's the bedroom back there. And I'm at the dinette and then the couch is right behind me with my work table set up. That is the tour of my 19... 90 ish trailer is it's this beautiful tealy green which i actually really like the color but it's a little out to date that's okay hi linda russell from indiana oh the oh i they so carla just said i want the hartman pattern with the otters had they had that one kitted i would have bought it for sure because i agree I also liked the lemur one. That was the one I went in that I thought I wanted to buy. And then Ray was like, mom, I'm sending her pictures. She's like, you want the penguin one? I said, okay, girl. Mm. Ah, Debbie Sinclair, that's a great question. She says, can you tell me the difference between the 301 and the 306? I do not know anything about the 306. I don't even know if I've ever seen one. I'll have to look it up and then I'll let you know. This is a um, basically just the big sister of the featherweight. It has a fixed shaft. It doesn't do any stitches or anything. It's just a straight, it's a straight shaft and it has a high slant shake. So none of the feet from the featherweight work on the 301, but it does have the same foot controller that I can take on and off the machine and the same, it uses the same bobbins and the same bobbin casing. But this thing is like, like industrial. Um, okay, so Lisa wants to know where Rogi is. Rogue is running around the 30 acres somewhere, probably getting into something that he shouldn't. Um, he tends to do that. Actually, will you go call him? Because I just realized he got into some garbage. Can you go call Rogue? I just realized he was getting into some garbage at the top of the driveway. <laughs> anyway, oh, okay. So I'm going to move away from the door. There, go ahead. Okay, you can go ahead. Now. He's not getting in the garbage. No, he was. I when I was up at the up at the house earlier. Anyway, fun stuff. Oh, hello, Cassiana. That's a beautiful name. Wow, from Maine. Hi, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm supposed to be sewing and sipping, but I'm doing more sipping than sewing. <laughs> Got a glance at the beautiful quilt. Yes, it's Tula. It's a uh, her two colors. It was, I bought, so when True Colors first came out, oh, I'm going to move the camera there. When True, True Colors first came out, I um, bought like a jelly roll of it. Well, actually I bought a bunch of it, but I took a jelly roll and turned it into this quilt on my bed that was designed by a friend of mine up here in the Pacific Northwest called Roxanne Carter. Do you guys want to see a better picture? I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here, look, isn't that pretty? And then I have this really cool backing fabric. It does not match, but look how cute it is. And then I put a strip of the two colors through the back. Isn't that fun? It gets in the 20s here overnight, so we actually have three quilts on our bed right now. <laughs> oh, Judy P., what, you had a hard time getting on? I had a hard time getting on, too. I think it's Facebook. Odie's like, cheers. <laughs> we won't tell Andy that you saw half of him. <laughs> He's camera shy. I said, do you want to get on the show with me tonight? And he looked at me like, woman? Are you crazy? I was like, well, I thought I'd ask. What am I doing? Oh, I'm at the wrong end. Okay. I'm going to start my piecing here. Oh, thanks, Linda. I guess I picked up this little cute springy shirt. I liked it because my shoulders are free and I was super hot in here a little bit ago. The hubs had the, he sits in front of a computer all day long. Here, I'll scooch this way a little bit. So he, um, he doesn't get his, you know, circulation flowing, and then um, he's always cold, and I'm always hot. Oh, I might need that piece on the floor. <laughs> Isn't that a gray pattern? 
So my friend Roxanne Carter, she has an Etsy boutique um, and she is like here in the Northwest, she is like a legend. She is the, one of the most amazing quilt designers I've ever met in my entire life. And she's just kind and a wonderful person on top of that. So, <laughs> hi, Anna Lewis from California. Thanks for joining us. Oh my gosh, you guys are funny. Tree says, uh, I love when you share. And then Odie said, <laughs> fun, fun. I'm scared to cut into my tulas. I know. What I know, it's a genuine fear, but this is a bigger fear of mine. Like, what if something happens to me and I have all this fabric that I haven't cut into and my family's like, send it to Goodwill. I mean, I would hope that my daughter, Ray, would at least be able to be like, no, Ma, that's mom's Tula stash. Because I do, trust me, have my fair share of uncut Tula fabric also. But I try with every one of her lines to do one quilt um, exclusively in her line of fabric. So that's what this particular um, uh, quilt is that I'm working on now. This is for her line work, line art. Hi, Lawrence. That's okay. You can be late. No big deal. Um, so I, uh, really needed to have some Idaho time this week. I was very drained after all of the camera work, extra, extra speaking stuff this week on the computer. I needed, I needed a little bit of downtime and one of my best friends in the whole world is here on property. And so her and I get to pal around and, um, that just makes me happy. So... Oh my gosh, the heat's coming on. I gotta turn the heat on. Ugh. He had it up to 75. That is why I am sweating. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my daughter has mentioned her concern about my stash. It's a real thing. I think she would totally protect the stash. I know she knows about which machines are worth protecting if you know what I mean. But I, I would hope she'd be like, that is Tula Pink fabric. That is an institution and it's sacred. That would be my hope anyway. <laughs> where, where is sister salesperson Beth? <laughs> she is about 45 minutes south of me in Idaho also. So just in case you guys didn't know it, there was a ripple in the time-space continuum because Denise and I are never in the same state at the same time. So um, I actually am going to drive down and have breakfast with her in the morning. I'm pretty excited to do that. So I know, crack a window before I start, before I just turn the heat down. Good Lord. <laughs> Denise, Denise, on you, she's on YouTube. She says, I'm here. Are you sipping and sewing, Denise? <laughs> well, you're probably sipping if I know you right. Well, I'm going to be posting a few machines next week for sale. <sighs> if anybody's on the lookout, I've got a 46 and a 41. They are not the prettiest girls at the ball, but their stitches are smooth and amazing. Linda Russell says, I just collected three small tokes from my 86-year-old aunt. She was afraid it would be sold by her daughter-in-law for a dollar or given to Goodwill. Oh, I get the fear. I get the fear. It's, it's legit. <laughs> Denise, you have some fans on here. <laughs> she says she's sipping water unless she's on my show. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. No two two twos. I'm it's they're both two two ones. One's a forty one and one's a forty six. 
<laughs> oh, nice. Linda in uh, Tennessee is sipping and or sip, sipping and sewing Girl Scout patches. I like it. Oh, this is a, that's a loaded question, Mel. So Mel wants to know um, how much fabric is considered reasonable yardage per design for a, for a stash. Hmm. So my mom-in-law, who I think is still on here, she was talking about, so she used to keep like a legit stash. So she'd see a fabric that she'd like, like a um, like a good border print. And so she had a rule of thumb. If she, if she saw a fabric that she liked, that would be a good potential border. Then she would buy three yards of it, two or three yards anyway. And then a good backing fabric, she'd buy five yards. Um, and then she got to the point where she had all this fabric and she wasn't really using it because she found that she was buying kits and such. And so then she landed up, um, donating it to like a, a nonprofit for some hugs quilts, you know, some charity quilts. And so after that whole thing, I've decided I don't, I don't keep a stash per se. I do hoard one small tote of Tula pink fabric. Um, but for the most part, I buy things in kits. And if I have extra pieces left over when I'm done with the top of the quilt, I try to piece it into the back of the quilt, like the one that I showed you guys a few minutes ago from my bed. Um, and I don't, I do not keep a huge assortment of, of, um, uh, stash anymore mostly because we move and when you move you usually pay for things by weight and fabric is heavy so um i only i only uh you know keep three totes of fabric that and it's not that's actually not very much i used to have a lot more but not so much anymore let's see no more <laughs> no more two two ones for the family unless it's a two 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 for me i don't i I just think they're going to be extremely hard to find. I that the 15 that I was able to get last year was an anomaly. Like the fact that I was able to get that many of them. See, Denise says she has three large totes of scrap fabric too. I, I don't, and I don't keep things unless if they're like, I don't keep two inch squares of anything. Like two inch squares of something, mm -mm. just too much to, to haul around. Oh, <laughs> oh no, Rose is away from her sewing machines because she's taking care of mom and dad. Teresa is not featherweight, but my sweet brother gave me three sewing machines. That's fun. All different brands look in the 70-ish, haven't even looked them up yet. That's cool. <laughs> three totes is not too much, Denise. Don't worry. Oh, someone put a link to a 222 on the Goodwill site. Who the heck donated a 222 to Goodwill? Oh my gosh. And, she, and Lisa said it's already up over a thousand dollars. Yikes. How can I get my sewing machine painted? Love the yellow machine that Lori Holt has on hers. So hello, Merle and Diane McCoon. Um, so I know of a couple of people that paint machines still. Um, there's a place called... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Huckleberry Featherweights. I think they're down in Oregon um, or maybe South, South, Southern Washington on the I-5 corridor, but they advertise on Facebook. Also Northern or Featherweights of Northern Michigan advertises a lot on, on Facebook. And there is a shop in Albuquerque, New Mexico called Hip Stitch that paints Featherweights also. Now the Hip Stitch, I actually have a a good uh, client in Bellingham that has had several machines painted by them and sh she vouches um, for their, their painting, um, con you know, quality and stuff. Cause it's, that's a hard, that's a hard thing. There's a tan featherweight for 700 on Goodwill. Oh, you guys, that is just a roll of the dice. You could spend $700 on a tan featherweight and then have to dump a whole bunch of work into it. So just buyer be the, the, I have purchased machines off of shop Goodwill and I have found dead bugs in them. They have come totally not working. Buyer beware on the Goodwill. It means that the, someone found it in grandma's closet and didn't know what it was and just dropped it off at Goodwill. And it could have not been sewn on for 30 years. 
Oh, Sunny says hip stitch painted mine. Oh, good. That's another, that's another good, um, uh, recommendation that I haven't, I don't have anything from them at all. Guess I better start paring down. I have a dresser and two bookshelves plus, oh, plus my totes, Lisa. I get it though. I totally get it. That's what happens when your local coach. Yes, you were there when the three dudes closed in uh, Tempe. I, I, we had a fabric shop go out up here um, in Bellevue. One of the quality sewings went out and they dumped all of their minky fabric down to 70% off. And I bought a whole bunch and I've actually used almost all of it. Jen Jen says, my brother gave me two machines. One was a Singer 201 and the other one I don't know anything about. The 201 is called the dressmaker machine. My grandmother used to make uh, wedding dresses on her 201. I like the 201, but the only issue is that it, it, I have my memes, my grandmother's machine, and it sits in a cabinet. So you have to have real estate to be able to have a 201 or it can sit in a wooden box, but nevertheless, it's, um, yes, Kathleen, that's true. Uh, but it's a, it's a, um, significant weight, weighted machine. Kathleen says that Roxanne's in Carpentina, California paints machines too. Oh, Oh, Lisa, I didn't know that was where you got your long arm. Lisa, I'm seeing you when I'm in California, right? Or when I'm in, um, not California, when I'm in Arizona. I, I think you said you were going to teach my featherweight class for me. <laughs> I think that's what you said, right? Mel says, agree about the buyer beware, but my first featherweight was 40 years in a garage and I picked it up for $95. My fave, she says. I, I've had machines through the shop that have literally been in closets for decades and they just roar to life. You give them a little bit of oil and grease and you'd never know, never know. The one, I had another featherweight, it's been crazy featherweights through the shop this week, but another featherweight that was purchased last month, and that one came out of someone, uh, someone's closet who was downsizing in my area, and it was, belonged to a mother-in-law, and it had been in the closet for 30 years, and it, I tested it before I purchased it, and that, bless that machine's heart, it just roared to life, it was crazy. That's right. No, Lisa, you're not helping. You're teaching the class. <laughs> you and dad. I'm just going to kick back and put my feet up. Is that okay? Oh, guess what, guys? My virtual spa day next weekend is sold out. Nice. And I have another one in April who ju just has like a few seats left. I think people are just kind of who people who were normally kind of resistant to the virtual, um, to the virtual classes are, uh, they are, um, kind of figuring out that this COVID thing isn't going away. And so if they want to be able to learn how to take care of their machines, they're going to have to do it online. So I'm actually really excited about my first virtual class next Saturday. Yay. Which machine would you like me to bring? You know, the collection can, Oh, can you bring any, can bring any, you know, it would be, could you bring the tan one, even though I know it's like in really good shape, but I don't think people have very many people see that tan machine. Does she have a name? Did you name her Lisa? Yes, hip stitch in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I believe. 
Lisa, are you by your computer? Could you look up hip stitch and throw the link in? <laughs> I have to take you out to dinner when I'm there. So this next week, we have one more block left on our winter solstice table runner. We are doing something different for those of you who like to stitch along with me on the Quilt As You Go Wednesdays. We are doing something different after the winter solstice table runner finishes up, and I'll be sending out emails about it. It's going to be a skill building machine quilting class that we're going to do. Um, but it's a significantly larger project, so we are going to... Um, we're going to do it once a month instead of once a week because the blocks are like 18 inch blocks. Look at my little. They're coming together. So I'll be sending out stuff about that soon. Hi, Sheila from Minnesota. Oh, Mabel. Mabel the tan machine. <clears throat> I will probably have my mom-in-law's 222. But I do. But So don't, worry, don't bring your 222. <laughs> Mel says, wore my Tula mask today. Line art, zebras, and peacocks. Love it. Sherry says, oop, boop, 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 boop. Where did that pattern information go? It's hiding. Oh, it was towards the top, Sherry. Just scroll up towards the top. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa put in the, um, the link to hip stitch. Is that what you... Yes, thank you, sweetheart. Hello, Elmer Davis from Ohio. Oh, it's Linda D Davis. Hi, Linda. Thanks for joining us. I am putting together little baby four and a half inch blocks because I like to punish myself with baby pieces. I mean, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? What are you sewing? I am working on a pattern. Oh, where's my pattern? It's called Grand Opening. It's a free download on Free Spirit's quilt, uh, Free Spirit page. And it's made with Tula Pink, her line work, and True Colors line. So these are literally these little four and a half inch squares are the setting squares to bigger blocks. Do you guys want to see my blocks? I'll show you my blocks. <laughs> Nancy, I said I could borrow your 222. Uh, where is it? Okay. So here's all my finished blocks. I'll show you what they look like. But here is what the quilt looks like. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay. Or not grand opening. Opening night. I keep doing that. I'm calling it the wrong thing. Okay, you guys ready for the reveal? So here's one. I know, okay, before anybody says anything, I know my pandas are off. Because this is a, um, this is a on point block. And I didn't realize that I needed, I cut the panda fabric first and I didn't realize I needed to cut it on the bias. So I, pandas are not right, but everything else is. Look at the lemurs. And then there's peacocks. And then there's little skunks. Come on, you guys, look how cute he is. Little stinkers is what they, they call that one, I think. Okay, so here's the blue. And the put it right side, pink. So I'm working on these little setting squares. And I love this one. I know it's the pandas and they're not right. But it's the purple. Green. Orange. blue. So there's 13 of these blocks and I'm making two extra ones because I like to do European pillow shams. We'll call them drunk pandas. Okay. I like it. Oh, more upside down pandas. There's the yellow and the pink. Aren't they pretty? And this is my last colorway. I'm almost there. Almost have 13 blocks done and then just two more, which I'll make in tandem and it will go really fast. <laughs> I don't know if we can hang it out anymore. 
Pandas off center. Really? You know what? It's my for my bed. It's okay if it's for my bed. It doesn't have to be perfect. I will not be judgy about it. I will just look and think, oh, it's tulip pink. So I had the honor this week of christening, basically, my friend's new studio in Issaquah, Washington at Gossipian Quilts. They just put in a new educational studio and they I was honored that I was the first one they asked to come in and teach in their new studio. It is so nice. We uh, My studio is usually in my living room. Like I'm literally in our trailer in my living room. But, and at home I'm in the basement of the house. But they have this beautiful, um, beautiful space. And it was awesome. Oh, you guys are so fun. Thank you. Trees, I don't know if I'm a better woman than you. I might be a dumber woman than you. Because I picked a pattern that had four and a half inch squares. This is not my jam, but I just loved the quilt. <laughs> Linda. <laughs> okay. What do I have to do next? I know what I have to do next. All right. Oh, Reagan's on the move again. So we, when she first got her license a few months ago, we put this software on her phone so I could track her movements. And it literally gives me a driving report card every time she stops moving the car, which she loves, I can assure you. Um, but, but since we've been here, every time she gets in the car to go somewhere, it tells me Reagan has completed a, you know, four mile drive with a max speed of 31 miles an hour and apparently she is just quite the mover and shaker when we are not in town because my watch has been lighting up like a Christmas tree You do gotta love it if you're gonna do this pattern, for sure. One time, she was palling around with my friend Sarah, who is a mom, she has toddlers, and she's a good friend of mine, but she said Ray was, ran to Target with her, apparently, and I didn't know um, that Ray was with Sarah, and I get this message that Ray had completed a 10-mile, um, a 10 mile run or drive and her max speed was like 71 miles an hour. And I'm like, Oh, so I, I texted her. I'm like, you better be with Sarah and not driving that car that fast. <laughs> she said, she's like, yeah, of course I'm with Sarah. Reagan actually is the most cautious driver. I know she doesn't speed. She barely goes the speed limit. So her, going 71 miles an hour, someone definitely had to be driving that car because it was not her. Boop, 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 that doesn't look right. I almost said that wrong. Hi, Barbara from Sudsbury, Ontario, Canada. Thanks for joining us. Bernadette, is that by you? We have a regular Canadian on and I she's from Ontario too, but I don't know what part. Barbara, I am working on my grand opening quilt from Tula Pink. I'm on my last block of, this is my 13th block. I just was showing everybody my other 13 or 12 blocks. And I'm, I am so almost there. I'm so excited. <laughs> Linda Russell says there is GPS for dogs. I would totally believe that. Although I have to be honest with you, I don't really want to know where my dog is going. I really don't. I guess if he gets lost or whatever, obviously I'd want to know where he was. But he doesn't, our dog doesn't run away from us. I think he knows he has it pretty good. 
uh, I have I have the dog with me this trip and Ray doesn't have her best friend and so she's been calling me constantly going how's rogue how's rogue rogue is fine oh six heads hours away okay nice barbara meet bernadette bernadette meet barbara <laughs> I have another uh, fan whose name is Bernadette also, but she calls herself Bellingham Bernadette, so I don't get Canadian Bernadette uh, confused with Bellingham Bernadette. <laughs> Carla, oh, you can put a tile on your dog? Really? I didn't know that. Tile are those things that, like for your phone, if you're always losing your keys or your phone, you can put this little, it's like, it looks like a little dog tag basically on it and it will tell you, oh goodness gracious, oh, my last pieces again, <laughs> I found them. Um, it will tell you where your dog is or your keys are, I should say, but I didn't know that. A, <laughs> you didn't. Bernadette, you did not. I did a speaking engagement, which is probably how Barbara found me last week in Ontario, or it was Kempville. Kempville, am I saying that right? Um, and they were saying things like a boot and A. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, stereotypical Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, Lawrence says that her his Cocker Spaniel would take herself on walks every once in a while. I had a lab that did that, too. Oh, my gosh. He would go find, like, a pile of poop. I kid you not. Poop to roll around in. And then he would bring himself back home. So proud of himself. What the heck? That was not Rogie. Carla says, oh, one is 200 and one is 400 feet. You mean feet? Oh my goodness, you guys, I'm almost here. Oh wait, hold on, hold the boat. What did I do? Uh oh, oh. <sighs> Me and the little pieces, I just about had a heart attack. Okay, I'm good. I have my stuff. <laughs> Maybe I should put down the wine. <laughs> so tell me, you guys, what signs of spring are there where you are at? Obviously not Cherry in Wyoming, who's expecting a big snow dump. But there has to be other places. We have crocuses in our front yard coming up and here the snow is melting and the ground is defrosting and it wasn't three when I woke up this morning. It was only 20, 200 to 400 feet for the tile. That's awesome. Carla, do you ever wear the earrings I sent you? I never got your picture. Our um, our UK friend, by the way, everybody, Kirsty says hello, but she had a long day at work and could not stay up to play with us. So I have to admire her dedication for staying up till midnight to hang out with us on the sip and so. Oh, see, okay, Joe is sneezing. That's spring. <laughs> okay, Mel. <laughs> Bernadette says, my uncle lives in Sudsbury and I have a lot of work colleagues. Very cool. Almost 70 in Chattanooga. Azaleas are blooming. That's amazing. Tips of daffodils. We have some daffodils up in our yard too. Lisa says, all my fruit trees have bloomed and we have lots of peaches. <gasps> Will you bring me some peaches if they're ripe when I come? I love peaches. Nice. Crocuses. Clematis is blooming. Nice, nice. 
here in Kansas, the daffodils are coming up and the green foliage for the naked ladies. Is that a flower? <laughs> Is that a flower? The naked ladies? Good lord! <laughs> uh oh. If you lost me, refresh. Those satellites. I'm here. Come back. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm back. Just refresh your screen if you if you lost me. And then. Diane is going to have to explain that naked ladies thing. Oh, I'm still waiting for a haircut every time it's good. Girl, child, still waiting for the haircut. Good night. Allergies are... Oh, Sandy, how long are you staying before you head back up north out of Florida? Oh, okay. I'll take some more jam. We went through what you gave us before, Lisa. Oh, it's a type of a lily. I did not... I have never heard of the naked lady lilies. Diane says, daffodils are emerging, snowdrops are blooming, 72 yesterday and 45 today. That's spring in Ohio. <laughs> Debbie Sinclair said, yes, it's a flower. Ours up four inches in mellow mushroom. Oh, is there an echo? Refresh the browser. Uh, there was a, I hit a bad. We're on the Elon Musk um, satellite service here. And it's... It's up most of the time because it's beta, though. There is some down spots, so you might have to... Oh, you leave on the 25th of March. Okay. So, Sandy, where do you call home when you're not in Florida? I think it's somewhere in New England, right? got a countdown going. Sandy says, my husband says 13 days left. Okay. Almost ready to start putting setting triangles on. Oh my gosh. This is so almost, you guys, I've been working on this with you for months, like months. And we were even here a few weeks ago and I put like a lot of um, work into it, and I'm still not done yet. It's just so much, so many little pieces. I love spring. I do think fall is my favorite also though. Can you have two favorite seasons? Oh, thank you for the reminder, Linda Russell. I did, for, forgot about that. We have our time change this weekend. Not not all of you Arizonianites. You refuse to uh, conform to the time standard change. Uh, naked ladies are a pink flower with a green stock. The leaf comes from the flower. Oh, the leaf comes after the flower is gone. Yeah, yeah, I know. Maybe Rogue will stop telling me it's time to eat. Like at 3.50 because it'll be 4.50 and time to feed him. Sandy Reese says, yes, New England, but I am homeless until we... Oh, no. <laughs> Girl, you have 13 days. Are you going to do a VRBO or something? Good Lord. Michelle in Oklahoma, she says she's been working, have been working on it for months too. My points are not, oh, don't look close at my points, Michelle. Do not look close at my points. Oh, my points are terrible. But I knew this wasn't going to a quilt show for judging because there's no quilt shows. So... I'm okay with my points not being perfect. Yes, Barbara, the fall is super pretty. 
fall and spring. Oh, good, Therese, you're in good company then. Mel says, lived in Albuquerque for many years, loved having four seasons. Otherwise, in Mississippi, it's hot or a short stint of cold. YouTube's always so quiet. Is there anybody out there? I mean, I see that there's people on here, but no one's chatting. Oh, that's why. Almost sewed that on wrong. <laughs> Joan Holland says, what are four seasons? <laughs> That was exactly what I thought when we lived in Arizona. What are four seasons? Hi, Debbie from North Carolina. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> oh, Sandy says we found a house in Maine. Hope we will get it. Very fun. Oh, good. There's people out there. Good. Sunny says, look at you, Darlene. Congratulations. I know. Look at me for almost being done. Yay. All right. Now I just have to make my settings triangles, full triangles, see, or squares, I mean. And then I've got these little half guys, and then I start building with setting triangles on to this. By the 13th one, I don't even have to look at the pattern anymore. Look at me. Yes, I enjoy seasons too. Kim Paulson. Let's see here. Hub and I were able to finally finish our COVID vaccines this week. Super crazy just to get appointments. I've heard. L uh, Linda wants to know, are you in AZ now? I am not in AZ now. We are living in the Northwest. Hello, Kyle from New Jersey on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. And Kathy's on from Richland, Missouri. Hello. Um, we lived in Arizona for like almost four years. My husband had taken a job there and that is what brought us to the desert out of the Pacific Northwest. And then the job went away, but Pacific, but featherweight doctor was um was really going well and so we decided to move home uh to the pacific northwest and um uh i miss my arizona friends though i miss my arizona family and my arizona friends but i do not miss 120 in the summer i absolutely do not miss that <laughs> Bernadette says in Canada, she says, sometimes we have four seasons in four days around here. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Barbara says, I would miss it four seasons, fall, spring. Yes, I know. Nice. Nice, nice. My trip to Arizona, which is coming up on March 26th, is probably my last um, trip there this, uh, at least this winter, because I'm not, I won't come up when it's too hot. So I'll, I might try and do another um, late fall class series if Oasis will have me back. But I'm pretty excited to see my buddies up there. I'm glad you found me too. Linda, I am on camera with my, my amazing online family uh, three times a week. So I have a show on Monday and Wednesday and Friday. So um, Monday's show is called Ask the Doctor. I answer viewer questions on quilting and featherweights. Wednesday is an online project that we've been working on, but that's coming to an end. And another one is starting. It's a quilt as you go program. 
Um, I just want to try to make these machines more famous than they already are and show people how um, how they're more than just really good piecing machines. They have, they have, they're a lot more than good piecing machines. You can quilt with them. You can free motion quilt with them. I just absolutely, um, love the featherweight, even though I'm on a 301 tonight. My 301 is my trailer machine. She lives here. Oh yeah. 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 Pam, Pam Green's down in, um, uh, Mississippi. And she said, tornado season is always dreaded. I can't even imagine. Hi, Suzanne. Welcome for joining us. Were you going to reorganize the sewing space? It looks great. Moved all the fabrics into large tubs. <laughs> I have too much fabric. <laughs> she has a whole tub of Christmas fabric, you guys. Um, you're in good company here. Apparently we're all hoarders, so it's good. We're fine. Call it a collection. They can't call you a hoarder. Uh, two tubs of large of solids and guild donation so she could buy more fabric. Suzanne, I'm going to revoke your shopping card. Oh, good night, Joe. Night, night. We have to come even if, yes, for sure. I'm for sure going to come back. I like seeing my in-laws, so I definitely will come down, even if I don't have a class. Uh, we had a winter in Sudsbury or Sudbury for the long now since November, and we have more coming tomorrow. Ooh. No, you make garments. That's right. You do make garments on your featherweight. I am um, a bunch of you friends uh, sent me pictures of your winter solstice, but I didn't have Ray here. So I'm going to show them next week. Mel Mitchell's is very different than anything else anybody has sent me. It's awesome. Like different in a good way. <laughs> she used bright fabrics. <laughs> Carla. Carla says, I'm a proud collector. <laughs> Me too, girl. Me too. All right, Judy P. Oh, is it time? Oh, I need to get off. Good Lord. I'm having too much fun. Okay. I am going to jump off right now, but I'll be back on Monday uh, for my Ask the Doctor show. I have a couple of good suggestions from the last couple of weeks, but if you would like me to talk about something on the show, then please feel free to email info info at featherweightdoctor.com. Uh, I really want to join. Or thank you for joining me tonight. It's been fun. You're always... Uh, just delightful and make my heart happy. So uh, I hope everybody has a great weekend. I will see you on Monday and we will talk to you soon. Bye guys. <laughs> a coastal version of <laughs> winter solstice, I'd say. <laughs>